Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by a couple of experts on that side of the table. Shrey. Martin. All right, tonight, uh, you know, for such a little game, the teach on this one is is a bit unique, and we're talking Race for the Galaxy, designed by Tom Lehman and published by Rio Grande Games. Now, Rio Grande is a partner of ours, uh, kindly enough provided us with a review copy as well as sponsored tonight's uh, live stream, so certainly appreciate that. Uh, Ken and everybody over at uh, Rio Grande certainly appreciate that. Uh, so, a little bit here before we get started. Race for the Galaxy originally came out in 2007, I think, and is, top 100 game in the world still, and is really, really well respected and really loved by those that have played it for the most part. However, there's a bit of a barrier to entry that it has always seen because it's, it's icon dense, which I will say after playing some of the games that I have played uh, over the last couple of years, this feels far less icon dense than it did when I first learned it. That said, it does have a bit of a barrier to entry in that regard, but it is a quick playing uh, tableau builder that, well, I mean, full disclosure, I've only probably played the game about a dozen times. I am far from anything other than a newbie. That side of the table, however, including the app, about how many times? Um, several thousand, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can play it in like five minutes, yeah. right? And on the app, right? So it's the, a quick game. Yeah, you showed me it was like almost seven thousand. So that's yeah, and Martin a lot. Yeah, not not as much by any means, but yeah, a fair bit. So there you go. So uh, tonight, how we're going to do this is I'm going to do a full teaching of how to play Race for the Galaxy. We are only doing the base game tonight. We will be doing the expansions down the road and in upcoming weeks and so on and so forth. However, thought since tonight is only the, or is the first time we're doing this, it made sense to just do the base game. That said, we are going to do two plays of Race for the, two full games after. The first one, they're going to talk about their, their thought process and, and their turns through this since y'all don't want to hear about it from me. You want to hear about what they're thinking about. And then the second one, there may be some of that. We're not going to show our hands uh, like, we, the, like they will in the first game. And we're going to show just how quick this game can be played uh, and, and go from there. And I think that's about it. Anything else on that end? Nope. No? No? All right. Hopefully you all are ready. If so, uh, let's get into Race for the Galaxy, shall we? All right. So Race for the Galaxy is a tableau building card game in which each of the players is trying to build the best galactic civilization. And by best, I mean score the most victory points. The victory points, there are 36 of them. There are 12 per player. They are in singles and fives here, and then there are others that will come into play for final scoring stuff. But this is going to be one of the triggers for the end of the game. So we have victory points here, which are the goal of the game. We have a deck of game cards. Then we have our, our uh, pseudo little discard pile. The reason I wanted to have a pseudo discard pile is to start off to show y'all the nice deck is going to be the draw deck. The messy one is going to be the discard deck because discards go face down. That's going to be important because we're going to be going through a lot of cards in this game. So each of us is going to be building up our own tableau, as you can see. But before we go into the details of how to play, let me go and talk about how the game works first before I go into anything else. So first off, each player has a hand of identical action cards. Those action cards are going to be the actions that we can take in a given turn. Each player has seven of them and they are all identical. So they are five different phases. We're going to be playing one of these down each simultaneously face down and then we will reveal once we've all done so. Then we will take those actions and those actions only. After we have carried out those actions, we will then have a hand of game cards, discard down to ten, take that card, put it back into our hand of, of uh, action cards, rinse and repeat, doing that over and over, over the course of an indeterminate number of rounds. Now normally, the game will take place between 7 and 11 rounds, however that may vary, okay, roughly. There are two end game triggers. 
when one player has built a tableau of 12 cards, we finish the round, go into final scoring. Or it, when the last victory point shit has been taken of the 36, again, 12 per player, we finish the round, then go into final scoring. All right? So before we go any further, I had mentioned that every player has an identical set of seven action cards in which they're going to be able to take various actions throughout the game. However, all of the game cards can be broken down into two different types of cards. They are either world cards, as you can see as shown, or world cards as by the world shape, the circle over here in the top left corner, or and with a number in the middle, or development cards, which are the diamond with a number in the middle. Every single card that isn't one of our action cards will be one of those two types. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the rest that's on these cards. These hexes with numbers in them are victory points. So when uh, these hexes are the same shape as the hexes that are the victory points, so it kind of makes sense. At the end of the game, any cards that are built in your tableau, you will add up those numbers, and that'll be part of your final score. Okay, easy enough. In addition to it being either a world or a development plus the victory points, you have a name. You may only ever build one name card. There are two copies of each card in the deck. You can only build one, so I can't have two Space Marines, for instance, whereas Martin could have one, I could have one. So that, you have some cool artwork, and then you have which phase it's going to convey either a bonus or when it triggers. So there are five phases that, which coincide with the five phase action cards that you can play down at the beginning of a turn. This just shows when it will actually trigger or come into play. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, so those are the two types of cards, but within those two types of cards, there are uh, distinctions that need to be made when it comes to the various worlds, okay? So, the worlds can basically be broken down into two or three different buckets. We have them as one group or bucket here and one group or bucket here. The first distinction that must be made is the difference between military or non-military. So if you take a look at the red outline of both the number and the world, you'll see that it's, well, in red. That is a military world. Whereas the black outline is going to be a non-military world. Easy enough, pretty clear distinction on that. The second distinction, now moving over to the second bucket, is going to be a production world versus a non-production world. Production is going to have a colored background behind the number. So you'll see that this uh, is an alien world, a yellow world, and this is going to be a gene world or a green world. And it does not, we're not talking about military, non-military. All we're talking about is the background with the color. Now you might be thinking to yourself, self, gray and white, our colors, that is true, but not in Race for the Galaxy. Think of gray as boring and drab and dead. So it's not a production world. And white, devoid of color, or technically all the colors, but in race, is a non-color. So only colors, not gray, not white. Those are non, so production, non-production. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. The last distinction that we need to make is the difference between production and windfall. So again, we've already covered what production is. Now you'll notice the halos around the cards. So we have a green halo here and a blue halo. A halo just means it's a windfall world. Now what's the difference between a production and a windfall? Well, during the produce action, these worlds will produce a good. Pretty simple. They do not come with a good already on them. Whereas a windfall world, when you settle a windfall world, when it comes into play into your tableau, these will come with a good already on them. And usually that is the only time that they will ever get a good. Do not produce, just come with. Do produce, don't come with. These are just dead. They don't come with, they don't get a good, bleh. Does that make sense? Those are the three kind of distinctions that we need to make. Again, military, non-military. Production, 
non-production. Windfall with the halos versus production versus neither. Once you understand this concept, honestly, you're 90% of the way to understanding Race for the Galaxy, okay? So now, let me go over exactly how a round works. So at the beginning of each round, each of us is going to choose one of our seven action cards to play face down in front of us. When we have played each of it, okay, hey, we've all played it, we all then turn them face up, and then we are going to carry out the actions that are listed on these cards. Now, each action can only be carried out once total. So you'll notice in this case, both Shrey and Martin both played the develop action. It's the same action. I played the settle action. So what's going to happen is there are five potential phases. In this case, we're only going to play two of the phases. We're going to play the development or develop phase, and then we're going to follow the set or follow it with the settle phase because those phases happen one, two, three, four, five in that order. Now, had Shrey played a different action, so let's say instead of the develop action, he had played the explore action. In this case, we're going to do the explore action then we're going to do the develop action, then we're going to do the settle action. Now, why do we do it in that order? Because one through five, that makes sense. Now, going back to this, as it is, Shrey played the develop action. Now, even though develop was played multiple times, we are only going to do the develop action once, universally. Each player is going to do a develop action. I get to do it even though I didn't play the develop action, that's okay. We all get to do the action. However, only the player that played that specific card gets the bonus that is conveyed on that action. Now, each of the five actions convey a bonus or some kind of benefit to the player that played it, but only to the player that played it. So in the development or develop uh, phase, both Shrey and Martin would get the bonus. We all would do the action. But then when we get to the settle action, everybody would do the settle action, but I would be the only one that gets the bonus. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and go over what the five actions are that you can do in Race for the Galaxy. So we'll just do them in chronological order. So starting off with number one. So the first action is explore. You'll notice that each of us has two copies of the explore action. They are similar, but different. This is basically how you add, mostly, how you add cards to your hand. Everyone is going to start with a hand of six game cards, along with their hand of seven action cards. This is how, the main, one of the main reason, or main ways, you're going to get more cards. So, the action allows you to have a base of drawing two cards and keeping one card. So you'll notice that they both have written in black, look at two, i.e. draw two cards from the deck, keep one. But depending on which one you play, you may get to draw more and or keep more. If you play this one, it allows you, this says, on top of that base, draw five additional. So we're actually going to draw seven cards, keep one of them, discard, the other six. So draw seven, keep one, draw, discard six, face down, always face down into the discard pile, easy enough. This one, similar but different, says you get to look at one additional, i.e. draw three, keep one more, keep two. So that makes sense, okay? So again, draw three, keep two, discard one of those, face down. One of the ones that you drew, not from your hand, all right? So, easy enough. Any questions on the explore action? I think that's, that's pretty cut and dried, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, good, all right, moving on. So, the second action is the develop action. This is where you're going to be able to start playing cards down into your tableau. And again, I want to reiterate, there are two types of cards that you will be able to play down into your tableau. There are world cards and there are develop cards. The action of playing cards from your hand is going to be mostly the same regardless of the type of card that you're going to play. And now, give me a minute and let's go ahead and talk about our hand of game cards. You're going to start the game with six cards in your hand. 
If you wish to take the develop action, which means you want to say, play a develop act, or a card down into your tableau, you can do so. However, these are multi-use cards in a sense that you have to pay some form of money to be able to play that card. Well, you might be asking yourself, self, well, he talked about cards, he talked about victory point chits, there's no money. You're right. You're holding the money. These cards are both the cards that you play down into your tableau as well as the currency in this game. The currency is discarding that number of cards. So if you take a look at, say, this develop card, this one, the cost is two cards. So I would have to discard two cards out of my hand normally and then I will score one point at the end of the game, and that's the bonus that it's going to convey to me. So normally, my hand of cards, I would choose two of these that I'm going to lose forever into the discard pile. However, you'll notice that I get a, whoever plays the develop card has a bonus, and that bonus is, hey, it costs one less to place a development, or so, hey, instead of that costing two cards, it only costs one. So in that case, I choose one of these cards. Hey, I don't think I'm really going to go that direction. I'm going to get rid of that card. I discard it down. Boom. I now have played that card. Every time you take a develop action, you can play one card and one card only into your tableau, even if you could theoretically play more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And then on top of all that, you'll notice that this card conveys a benefit or it triggers, whichever that may be, in phase three. So when we get to the third phase, and this one in the fourth and fifth phase, respectively. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay. All right. So that's developed pretty straightforward, pretty simple there. All right. So the next one now is the third, which is the settle phase. The settle phase is I, almost identical to the develop phase, except you're going to be able to do that with world cards. So for instance, let's say I had a hand of those world cards right there. The costs for most of these cards, or at least these here, the non-military worlds, is going to be that number discarded from your hand. Pretty straightforward, right? This one, let's go ahead and take a look at what the bonus says. The bonus says, if you played the settle action, you get to draw one card after placing a world this phase. So just like the develop action, I can, if I choose, play a card from my hand, and let's say I choose to go ahead and play the pre-sentient race here, like so, there, that will cost me two cards from my hand to play. So I choose two of these, I would then discard it out, and let's say, hey, I choose these two to discard, those go into the discard, boom, I have now paid the cost to build that world. But what happens, remember, this is what? A windfall world. Windfall has that halo, what does that mean? That means it comes with a good already on it. Okay, so where do I get the goods from? Well, I told you, these are multi-use cards. You take from the top of the deck, the rules say to put it on top, it's actually cleaner, and that way you're not covering any information, to just put it underneath, and now that green gene world has a good on it. So hey, all right, awesome. And it's not a production world, which means it will not get another good on this normally, because it's just a plain white world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that is the settle action for non-military worlds. Okay. But wait, we haven't talked about military worlds. Okay. Well, military worlds, remember, are the ones that are outlined in red like this. So what are the rules for being able to place military worlds? Well, let's take a look at my tableau now. I chose to go ahead and put this windfall world down but let's say maybe I chose not to do that, and instead I want to be able to play this two military world. Well, instead of discarding cards from your hand for military, you must have military strength to quote unquote conquer this world, which is free to play, provided you have the military strength to do so. So the strength here needed is two or greater. So it's that number or greater. Well, we take a look at the Space Marines, Ura. 
Uh, this one says, hey, in phase two, oh wait, or phase three, that's the settle, oh, that's now. This says I get plus two military strength. Awesome, so I have two, that, oh, hey, that's the payment, nothing. I don't have to discard any cards from my hand, I just play it down. And this is a production world because it has a colored background. It's not a windfall. So it doesn't have a halo, which means it does not start with a good, but when we get to the production, it will produce goods on it. Does all that make sense? Yep. All that clear? Mm -hmm. But for our, argue, or for our uh, example, let's go ahead and say, hey, I maybe on a previous turn had built that there. Okay, any questions about the settle action? Nope. All right, so moving right along. Moving now onto the consume or phase four here. So you'll notice that there are two action cards available for each of us. They are identical, but different. The base action is identical. The bonus is different on each of them. So the key word here is the consume word. So let's go back to my tableau now. And again, that when this windfall came out, it came with a good already or on it like that. Okay, so hey, one of us played the consume action. Okay, consume actions are mandatory if you are able to do it. A consume action is going to be listed in step four or phase four on any of our cards. So you'll notice out here that I only have one consume action. Well, if I have a good, I must consume. If I had multiple consume actions, but I only had one good, I would choose the order in which I would do so. Once that good is consumed, I have no more goods to consume. Even though I had multiple consume actions, I would, I'm only required to take the, as many as I can, as it were. Okay. So what this one here says is that you consume one good from any one of my worlds and score one victory point. So what does that look like? Pretty simple, I consume the good. Look, here, that goes there, I get a point, boom, done. That is consumption. That simple, that easy. Any questions on that? If I had multiple goods out here, I would only do this once. Unless it shows a times some number that isn't one, you only are allowed to do it once and only required to do it once. However, now there's the bonus. So let's go ahead and talk about the bonus on this one first. Pretty simple. Receive twice as many victory point chits as you would have normally received in this phase. Oh, I got one. Oh, hey, you know what that means? I get a second, cool, boom, done. There's my bonus. Awesome, great, all right. The, if I had chosen to play this one, however, you'll notice that there is a trade that happens before consumption. And I wanna stress the must in this case. It says trade bonus. And notice again, trade happens before consumption. You must first sell one good at these prices, then use consumption. So let's go back to our example from earlier here where before I had, if here, but before I do the trade. So going back to this, the what it says is I must trade a good for the or for, for for the monetary value based on the color of the good that it is. What color good is it? It's a green one. Why? It's on a green planet. If it were here, it'd be a brown one. If it were here, it'd be a blue one. Pretty simple. So what does that look like? That means. I discard the good, and then I'm going to get some amount of money. Well, it came from a green planet, a gene planet, so I get four money. What's money again? Right, it's four cards into my hand. One, two, three, four, cool. I add that to any existing cards, and now it's either now a development, or a uh, development, or a world, or it's money if I choose to discard these in a subsequent action. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, there are obviously a ton of different consumption actions and icons. Uh, the game does a pretty good job of showing you what those are. Doesn't make sense to go over those in detail, so we're not going to. But that, in a nutshell, is phase four, consumption. Any questions on that? No. All right, we're almost home. The last action now is produce. 
hey, this is how those production worlds are going to get goods on them. Awesome. So, the base production action is, hey, each of your worlds that can produce, do so. But the bonus says, produce a good on any one of your windfall worlds that does not already have a good on it. Well, hot diggity. So let's take a look at my tableau now as it is right now. So if I or someone else plays a produce action, I take from the top of the deck goods. So this one does not get one because if I didn't play the produce action, this one does, it gets a brown good, cool. This one does, cool, there. If I played the produce action, this does get one because it's my only windfall world. If I had multiple windfall worlds, in that case, I would choose one of the worlds that gets it. There's a big catch here. And that catch is every world can have a maximum of one good ever at a time on it. So in other words, if this were the situation and somebody played the produce action, I don't produce because it has a good. I don't produce has a good. This never produces unless I played the produce action. Easy enough. If it were something like that, the only world I would play, I would be able to produce on is that one because everything else already had a good on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let me reiterate how the game works. We choose one of our seven actions, play it down face down. Once we've all done so, we turn it face up. Then we all take whatever actions that we played each action can only be taken once, even if played multiple times. We rinse and re do that, discard our hand of game cards down to 10 cards, rinse and repeat until there's a tableau of 12 cards in one player or the last victory ch uh, point chip is taken. Then we finish that round and then we go into final scoring. There will be some developments that get built that are, hey, score this many points based on this many keywords. And there are keywords in this game, let me show you that, that for instance, here, for every rebel world that you've built, so you'll see that rebel is highlighted in that. In addition to that, you'll notice that it has the little uh, kind of moon on it as well. But that said, that's pretty much it. Whoever has the most victory points wins, and that's how you play Race for the Galaxy base game. Whew. You're telling me, you're, you're, you're good, don't worry about it, there we go. <laughs> All right, so easy peasy. Everyone ready? Yep. All right, yep. so now we need to set aside all the world card, all the uh, starter world cards. There's that one. There's that one that should be, what, 11? Yep, yep, and that one. Yep. All right, so all of these then? There, there, there. All of those now, oh, Shrey. Uh, don't shuffle those yet because. The starter worlds, there are 11 total. We each get two and I, choose I, one, I'm right? actually a little confused because in the base game originally, you only got a few starter worlds and you get one each. Right. And then when you went to the expansions, you get more starter worlds, some of which are red and some of which are blue, and you get one red and one blue yeah. to choose from. Um, and I don't know what they're doing in the second edition because I don't have the second edition. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, and it didn't say in the yeah, rules. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, it said you get the uh, zero through five. Yeah. Find the, find that's, those, that's and like, let's just do that. Yeah, so okay. find zero through five. Okay. Ignore the uh, minus ones, then, yes. and uh, just do that. Those are actually for the expansion. Well, they're, they're part of the extra world. What's yep. Okay. So All right, so there are five. five. We'll so we're going to shuffle those up. Nope, again. those go oh, in and get again. shuffled. Yep. Right. Yep. So, the, in fact, let me see those real quick. Uh, let me just, yeah, let me show, I guess I probably should have spelled that out as well. So part of the setup here is, you'll notice that these have numbers down here at the bottom, zero through, f oh, there we go. Zero through five, we're missing five. Uh, no, zero through four. Zero through four, sorry. So there, those are the starter ones. So we're going to shuffle these up, deal everybody one, and that's your starter world. Well, you, you actually, um, oh yeah, in this game, yeah, there's no decisions. Y'all aren't there. used to playing the base game. Yeah. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Bring the chat. Oh yeah, 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 let me bring that up. See if there's any comments. Okay, all, all right. right. All right, sure. I don't know why I'm shuffling those. All right, uh, these start out here, all right? So I start with, uh, mine is Alpha Centauri, 
And it starts once we shuffle. Now I'm going to actually need my glasses. And let me bring up the chat and everything else. Give me just one second. There we go. All right. So uh, mine is Alpha Centauri. It is a brown. What is brown? The rare. Right. It's a rare earth yeah. uh, a world. So it does not produce, but it starts with a good. And uh, in the settle phase, it's either a discount of one non-military or it's plus one military, depending on what it is. So yeah, I'll take that. Awesome, good deal. All right. And go ahead, uh, Martin, what's yours? Yeah, okay, so I have Earth's Lost Colony. So it's um, a production blue world. Blue is novelty goods, which are the cheapest goods. Um, and it also has a consume power. It will consume one of any kind of good, hence the four colors there, for one victory point. There we go. And Shrey? And I have New Sparta, which is a uh, colorless uh, military world, and it's it uh, has a uh, base strength of uh, plus two military. So it's a go. quick start to getting military going. Awesome. That's what I want, these guys starting with military. Yeah. So mine starts... Good there, idea. and then we each start with six. Yep. Yeah, so we, we could have we'll done that. It doesn't, down yeah. Four. Two, three, four, five, six. And discard down to four, yep. you said? Okay. Yep. So. Hmm. Uh, all right, so now what's going to happen here is uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and let uh, Martin go through his since... Uh, there you go, scoot it over a little other way. There you go, right there. There you go. Okay, so this is my opening hand. I've got to discard down to four cards. So I'm looking at this hand. I, I'm fixed with Earth's Lost Colony. So this is production consumption. So it's encouraging a bit of production consumption stuff. And this is what I have for my possibilities. So one thing I immediately see, I've got no military strength. So this military card is going to be hopeless, so I'm going to immediately um, toss that out. Because I'm thinking, uh, when I'm doing my initial card, I'm always thinking, what am I going to do in my first turn or my first couple of turns? So I'm just really focusing on just what my initial move is going to be. So since I don't have any military, the military's out. So I'm looking at these. This would be quite cheap to build, because it's only one to build. Um, this is more awkward to build, will be a bit more powerful, because it's a production world, which is kind of nice. Um, this, of course, is really nice in terms of its production. It gets real uh, bonus and production capability, but it's a five. I'm not going to be able to build that in the first round or so. So that's likely to go. Um, this is a uh, Alien Reserve Stone World. It's got some nice benefits to Alien Worlds. I've got no Alien Worlds up here, so this doesn't look very enticing either. And then the Galactic Federation. This is one of the so-called Sixers, the six-point development cards. Now these, you'll notice, have a question mark in their victory point count. It's because their victory points, there's going to be some interesting things about the victory points, and that's going to be outlined in here. I'm not too worried about that at the moment, except for the fact that with a sixer, you kind of always have this choice. Do you want to hold on to a sixer and aim your strategy towards the sixer? Or do you say to yourself, hey, it's just going to be, you know, money's going to be tight, I might as well use it as money early on in the game. I don't think I have to make this decision yet because this alien Rosetta Stone world really is not going to be something I'm interested in. So those are the two cards I'm going to discard, and these are the four I'm going to keep in my hand. All right, and again, just to be clear, this first play of the game tonight is going to be a lot of this. It's not going to be this extensive, maybe, uh, but definitely early on. And then the second play that we do tonight is not going to be this, and you'll see how quick it plays. So that said, Shrey, take it away. Yep, so I have, I started the game with New Sparta, which is a military world, uh, military strength plus two. So I was looking for some military worlds in my hand, <laughs> which I have none of. That's, you got one, you got well, one. Well, I've got one, but it, it's not It's not a production military world, so uh, that's. It, it's a fine one, but it's... it's it, and it does give you extra military strength, yeah, yeah. right? But yeah, I will defer bonus. to you. Yeah, and a trade bonus. It's a good trade bonus. I actually like that one, but maybe... But, um, and, I pro and, and that is one that I would hold on to just because it would be an easy build. Um, but um, so what I'm looking at here is um, this colony ship, right? So this this one is, is, um, is a, de a development that... During the settle phase, you can discard the card from your tableau. You can blow up the blow up the card, 
and play, play a non-alien world, non-yellow world, to your Tableau for free. Regardless of the cost? Regardless of the cost. And it I, could be military as well, or no? No, no. Okay, non-military. Non-military, non, non-alien. Got yes. it. And so I happen to have a high cost, uh, <laughs> rare brown world, and I, nice. it's, it's it's a nice one. Um, I actually like a lot of species of aqua. You'd prefer this? I would yes. prefer that because it got the Martin's has Green production. Five, right? <laughs> yeah. Production production power is awesome on that. But this has a nice uh, this is a nice consume power. So uh, I would definitely keep this these three, and then the last one is really a spender. Um, uh, I don't have any green world, so I don't have, uh, don't really have an interest in this yet. Although I'll probably end up drawing one really quickly and then regret throwing it out, because um, <laughs> that's the way life works. And that, but I actually do like industrial robots because it has a nice balance of, uh, of production and uh, and development power. So I will keep those four. All right, and mine. I'm going to go a little bit. I, I, my, mine is a little bit less uh, in, in, involved here. Uh, basically, this one has, I'm kind of hedging on both sides because of Alpha Centauri, a little bit of military. And the way my hand worked out, it just, these are the four that I'm keeping. Again, I'm not going to be the one y'all are going to want to hear from tonight. So there we go. My starter worlds right there. Boom, done. All right. So now, or for starter cards, I should say. And uh, so now... <laughs> The, the meta begins, right? It's what do you think other people will play and you want to do multiple actions or is so trying to... Well, I'll, I'll, shall yeah. I go first? Yeah, sure, so go, I'll go for I'll go through it. my thinking at this point. So now I'm looking at other people's worlds and that's giving me some idea what they're likely to do. Edward is almost certainly going to trade because he's going to want to turn that card into three cards in his hand and you very, very likely will trade there. Similarly, Shrey is pretty likely going to, uh, if he, with New Sparta, if he's got a military world in his hand, which, and of course, I don't know whether he has or not, <laughs> he's going to want to build that with a settle. Um, so there's a good chance, certainly not a certain chance, that Shrey will go for a settle. If he doesn't settle, probably what he'll do is explore to try and find a, military, uh, a cheap military world that he can build with that. So there's a good chance of an explore, Good chance to settle. He's certainly not going to um, trade or produce because it wouldn't be any use to him. He might develop if he's got a good development. And of course, we know he has a very good development, but of course, I don't know that. So that's what the first thing I'm doing, scanning the board to see what is everybody else doing. Then I look at my setup here. So as I said, this Lost Species Arc World, lovely card. There's no way I'm going to be able to build it early in the game. I think... Look, I'm certainly not going to be able to build the Galactic Federation either, although I might try and hang on to the card for some glory afterwards. So the question is, is one of these two worth doing? And here I have an interesting choice. The Destroyed World is cheap. I can toss one of these cards and build it just like that, and I'll get an immediate goods, which I can then trade the next turn round. Mining World is a bit better long term because it's a production world, so I'll be able to cycle production better. Um, and that's kind of nice, because I've got this one going up here. Um, but I think my preferred option is going to be to settle that destroyed world. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean I take the settle action. If, I'm, if I was really confident that Trey was going to settle there, I would say to myself, maybe I want to leech off his settle and do something else funkily myself. But I'm not that sure that Trey is going to, because he's only going to do a settle if he he's has got a military. the military world that's sufficiently weedy that New Sparta can take it over. So, in other words, he might explore, might settle, so... Possibly develop, but those right. are the two yeah. likely right. options. So, I'm going to be a coward, and I'm going to choose settle for my action. Okay, so we all played it, all right, yep. we all turn it up. I'm, I'm trading, developing, and settling. So there we go. So each of us is going to do two, three, and four in that order, and we'll take our time doing this to start. So we'll just do it because you played it, Shrey. Right. So there you go. So I will uh, play my colony ship, the one that lets me blow up a blow up the colony ship to uh, settle a world for free. Yep. And it will cost me one card. Why I, one? Cause because normally it because, says two. Because it would cost me tor normally, and since I have develop, play develop, I get a discount of one. Yep. And uh, I... I Mm. Go and bring him up. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I I'm gonna 
I'm going to throw out the industrial robots, even though I like the card quite a bit. Now, um, we would normally not know this. This would yeah. be secret yeah. and discarded face down. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So that is your develop. Now, now normally, we would be doing this simultaneously. Yep. Yep. Okay, but as it is. Um, I can't develop because the only development I have is Galactic Federation. That's way more expensive than I have. And that worked out really well for me because I wanted to develop because I have investment credits, mm. which gives me a discount of one uh, to place a, uh, a development card. However, it does not apply to itself. So in other words, I don't get a discount. It is a discount down to zero had I played the develop, but I did not. So it's going to cost me one. Now the question is, which card? I'll be honest. I like all of these. Uh, whereas this one is trade for two, the two military, I only have a one military, but, uh, if I'm able to play this one, it then gives me a second military, which then allows me to play the avian uplift race. And notice that the uplift word mm. is in green. So it's going to be what? No, uh, so you have one brown military specifically. Oh, thank you. Yep. I, that's the, and there's another one of the icons that we haven't covered there. That is a brown military specific, so it would not apply to that one. So that said, one of these two is going to be my payment, and being reminded of that, thank you, I will actually discard the avian race. Boom, there's my develop. You are not obligated to develop, however, it probably behooves you to do so. So, done. All right, so now we all settle. So Martin, go ahead and run us through so that. So obviously, I, as I indicated earlier on, I'm going to settle my destroyed world. That will come with a good. And I get to toss one of these. Um, mining world, I think, as I said, I'm hoping I might use that later on. The Galactic Federation, um, I'm, I might as well hang on to it because really I don't see me using this Lost Species Arc world. So that goes. All right, so now settling, um, I would love to be able to settle, but as you can see, cost three, cost two. Well, I have two cards, but if I were to settle that, I now have one, and one is not two. I do, oh, wait a minute. I forgot, I have a discount of one. I will, yeah. actually. No, no, only for brown. brown. God, God, good. Specific brown. Yeah. Um, so, therefore, I will not settle. Done. All right, and then I will, I will blow up my colony ship. So the card will leave my tableau. This is one of the few times the cards ever leave your tableau. Otherwise, once they it's built, it's built. They right? don't really ever, yeah. like, so that'll get replaced with New Earth. I mean, I've got New Sparta and New Earth, apparently. It's, <laughs> okay. Know what's going on And there. what is that new? It is a, it is a, uh, a production world, a brown, rare pr brown production world that consumes um, a good for a point and a card. Okay. All right. Nice. All right. That, that's actually an argument against me picking Settle because, of course, even though I didn't know he was going to do that trick with a colony ship, I know he's got New Sparta. So if he had got a low military world, I'm giving him Settle. Now, as it's turned out, it's worked out even better for him than that would have been because he's had that colony ship. That has really worked out well for sure. Right. And you already took your bonus, which is oh, drawing no, no card. I'm taking my bonus, of course. I get one card. You did not. Hand. There you go. And now the Settle action is done. Yep. So now we do the trade consume. Trading happens before consuming. So anybody that has a uh, anybody that has a resource a good sorry now trades it so this if, is if, for anybody who call trade who does that yeah thank you it's the bonus action which is me that is a brown that goes away i then get to take three so one two three there's trade and now everybody consumes so as you see I have no goods. Shrey has no goods, so we don't consume. Well, well, and we don't have any. And here, all the people who play Race of the Galaxy regularly have been laughing at me the whole time because, of course, I made a big mistake. I knew Edward was going to was, was likely to do trade. I've got a consume power. If I build a world with a windfall, I'm forced to consume. So I was hoping to trade that, but it was never going to happen. 
I have to consume it. I get a stupid victory point that I don't want at this point in the game. Because of... And I have uh, forced yeah. to use the consume power. That was an out-and-out mistake. And that is one of the reasons why I'm not very good at this game. Because oh. I make those kind of mistakes. Victory points are never stupid. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're winning. Um, uh, I think, wait, no, one, no, two... He, he, no, no, he's, he's not. No. Four to two, you're right. Yeah, no, I tried, Mark. All right, so that's the end of the first round. All right, so now... Everybody would have to discard down to 10 cards. I have five. Obviously, everybody has under that. I will look at those in a minute. And then we're all going to play in action. So there you go. Um, so again, I'll talk through mine. Um, so I'm absolutely kicking myself after what's happened. I get this gateway station, which is kind of interesting. I'd say two consumes for a victory point and three cards, which mm. actually could be quite nice if I can get this mining world out as well. The trouble is I'm going to have to con um, get rid of two cards to build this gateway station. That's my least favorite start in the world. Which is very, very awkward. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, therefore, is I could really do with a couple more cards in my hand. I don't usually like using Explore um, plus one plus one, but I think I'm going to do it this time. It'll get two more cards into my hand. It'll give me the cards to do gateway station. And I'm still kicking myself for my stupidity with a destroyed world. And then I'm looking. I'm looking at my uh, my my hand of one. Uh, this like you know fine uh, military we'll bring it, bring it back mi military you. world. And right. I'm thinking um, I'd be fine building that if 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 one of these two wants to call settle, I will settle. That's that that's totally fine. Um, I'm hoping that um, that Martin might want to produce to get that good back onto the brown world, so that that I, I could get a I could get a good on my brown world. Um, uh, so, and since I have nothing else in my hand, I'm just, I, I think um, exploring is a reasonable choice for me because then I can maybe find a, a, a low, uh, um, low cost uh, military world and be able to settle it easily in a future turn, or maybe some more military strength for higher cost in the long term. And for me, uh, so let's see. So I don't have, remember, discounts on browns. So the only brown that is in my hand here is this. Uh, Blaster Gem Mines, so that would be that would cost me two to play this, which would add to my military, which it would, st would cost you three to play. It. He's got the discount. Ah, yes, sorry. The Good discount point. on yeah. Alpha. Good okay, luck. so because brown. Yep. So that would cost me two, which you know, getting rid of. I mean, I would love to be able to keep the Rebel Outpost. It's five points at the end of the game, but realistically, that's a ways away. Um, and the problem here with the three military is that one doesn't apply because it's a blue world, not a brown world. So I could go ahead and settle, uh, looking at that, which I would probably go ahead and discard both of those. The other option is I could develop. Develop here, this would be free for me to develop because I get a discount of one. Actually, it would be, yeah. Uh, and if I played settle, sorry, if I played develop, I would get a discount of one from this. If I played it, it would be a discount of two, but obviously you never get paid for playing a card, so it would only be down to zero. So it'd be kinda, I'm hoping maybe one of them plays that. So realistically, I think settle or explore, and the fact that I would see that Trey only has one card in his hand, odds are he's probably going to explore. So therefore, I think I'm gonna go ahead and settle. So let me grab the settle action and boom, done. There, so we all flip. All right, so uh, explore, explore, settle. So we only explore once, and the order doesn't matter because it's a random deck, and you played what? Uh, draw three, keep two? Yeah. Go for it. Same. Draw three, keep two. Mm. And I just get to draw two, keep one, because I did not play the explore. And uh, here, Shrey, why don't you go first talking about this? All right. Yep. So I drew um, a, a six development for endgame scoring. It's a you know reasonable one to think about. Um, it gives you two points for every uh, production world in your tableau at the end of the game, and then one point for every good. This is actually a modified card from the original base set, uh, the original first edition. Um, uh, then consumer markets, which is is a is a good card if you have a lot of blue worlds. It it'll It'll consume blue goods and produce, uh, give you cards whenever you produce on blue worlds, which is nice if you have like three or four or two, two even two blue worlds. And then 
a common zone which is similar to Martin's Mining World, which uh, produces on, um, gives you a card whenever you produce on it. Um, I, so I'm definitely getting rid of the consumer markets because I don't have any blue worlds. I don't, you know, if I had at least one in my hand, I might hold onto it, but otherwise, no. All right, and Mr. Fowler? And for me, the choice of which card to dis discard is pretty straightforward. I'm not into military. Uh -oh. Bring yep. it, there you go, yep. right. Sorry, yeah, here we are, yeah, sorry. Oh. Whoa. To your, there you go, right there. Mirror there you effect, go. you see. Right, so yeah, no yeah, yeah, there you go. There so these you go. are the three cards. Um, of these, I'm not into military, so. <laughs> just they're cut and dry, just goes. boom, done. Thanks. All right, good. Uh, for me, I actually have a bit of a conundrum here. Oh, yeah. I drew Mining Robots, which is a two development, which if I play develop, is free for me to play, and it allows me, every time I produce, to produce on a brown windfall, which would be that one which normally would never be able to produce. That seems awesome for me, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Then the uh, Imperium Armaments world here is a three brown. Remember, I get a discount of one, and it adds military. They're both really good for me, given what I have, but I think that's too good yeah. for me to pass up, so I'm going to discard that, and I will keep that one there. All right, so that is the explore action. Both of them take those, and then we all settle. And again, uh, if I settle, I get a bonus of playing one more, and I am going to settle, and the I think the obvious one to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and settle the Blaster Gem Mines, I think, because, well, will y'all produce is the question. And the, what I'm debating right now is either play, playing one of these two. This allows me to, uh, they both cost two because a discount of one on that. Um, adds to military. Realistically, I'm not going to do anything with the military, and this allows me to, whenever I trade a blue good, I get an extra two. You know what? I think, actually, I will go ahead and do Spice World. And it's going to cost me two. I don't get a discount of one. So maybe we just say to heck with it, and we go ahead and pay our Pirate World and our Rebel Outpost for the two since I don't have a strong military, and boom, done. That's my settle, but as the bonus, I get to draw one card into my hand. Boom, that's my settle. Y'all go ahead. Yeah, and then I can only settle one card. It's the uh, the military world, I, because this one costs three. I, I don't have uh, four cards in my hand, so I will definitely just settle this. It's, you know, uh, if I see more military worlds, it'll, it'll hopefully pay off, but right now, uh, that's not the case. So it's, it's free. A right, seriously, right? Because you have two military. Yep. All right, and Martin? And I've got a real puzzler to, uh, to deal with now because these were the two extra cards I picked up and they're both quite attractive. I mean, I was kind of thinking I wanted two cards so I'd build the gateway station, which was reasonable, but both of these are really good and I've got now an interesting choice. So the Galactic Engineers, it's not a production world, it's a dead world, which makes it kind of boring, but it allows me to produce on a windfall world. I've already built a windfall world. So as a result, this basically is like a, a brown produce for me, which actually is just what I could do with. It's really kind of nice. But then I've also got this deserted alien outpost. Now this isn't a production world, it's a windfall world, but it's an alien windfall world. And that means that when I trade an alien goods, I get five cards. So I would cost me four to build it, but then I'd get a good on it. Next round I trade and I get five back. That is a really juicy <laughs> possibility. And if it was, my feeling though is that if my rest of my cards weren't very appealing, this would definitely be the way to go. But I'm inclined to more go with the Galactic Engineers because I actually like the Gateway Station, I think it's going to combine nicely with the Galactic Engineers and my existing tableau. I think I can actually get something really good going by combining those. And I kind of like this Galactic Federation still. I sort of still feel that I might be able to do something with that later on. Although it, my hand is tending more and more away from developments. Um, but the combination of Galactic Engineers and Gateway Station I think is more um, appealing. So I'm going to build, the, of the two of them, the better one to build first I think is Galactic Engineers because it will be, it sets me up for production. 
And what am I going to get rid of? Well, actually, now the mining world is a lot less appealing because I've got my second, I've got a second production. Um, that will allow me to set this consumption up. Could hold on to it because I might be able to build it later on. I definitely want to keep the gateway station. The deserted alien outpost is too much of a push, so that's going to be one of the two. So now, do I want to keep this Galactic Federation? This is always a problem with Sixers. Well, I'm not really feeling I'm aiming towards this Galactic Federation on the whole. This one could end up being useful, depending on how things work out. So I think I'm going to toss those two. All right, and that is our settle. And again, hold on, there it is. All right, cool. Uh, nobody's at 10 cards. We don't need to worry about it. Rinse and repeat. All right. So is this making sense to all? I know a lot of y'all, if not most of y'all, uh, have played race before. But is this making sense for those of y'all that haven't? Hopefully, uh, we're being clear and helpful on all of this. So now, going through, oh, God, what? Uh... Yeah, so I have two choices. I'm not going to settle. So give my hand. I wouldn't settle. I wouldn't develop. I'm not going to trade. So uh, it's really either uh, explore or produce. And uh, I would like to, to produce because I can I can trade a brown, brown good for uh, five cards, which would be nice. Exploring would get me some cards immediately and then maybe someone else would produce, but um, I think how many, so this is when I start to ask the question, how many cards are in your hand? Because, All right, mm -hmm. I, have, I have four. I have two. Right, so that leads me. Because that's public info, Yeah, that's right? public yep. info. Yep. It leads me to suspect that, um, that, that Edward might have something, so I'm thinking Edward might, might choose to produce. Um, Potentially. And, but he has four cards in his hand, so maybe he has something that he wants to build. Uh, so I'm, I, would, I, I would probably lean more towards produce. Okay. okay, so I'm having a similar question to Shrey. I'm looking at what I've got. Shrey has got how many cards in his hand? Two. Two. Edward's got four. So not high chance of develops or settles from them. And are, is either of them likely to produce? Well, Edward's got a production world sitting there. He would get two if he gets that. You have got a production world, so that's a possibility that you might produce. If I produced, of course, that would allow me to get two goods, one here and one here. Um, but also, if somebody else produces, I get one here and one here because the special power will allow me to produce on destroyed world. I really want to get this gateway station out so that I can start doing interesting things with that. I need two cards to do it. I only got one, um, and I kind of like the mining world. So I think I'm going to do what I did last time, and I'm going to explore, aiming to do that. And if somebody puts a settle down, that will be great. If somebody produces a produce, that will be great too. And for me, Having having uh, drawn mining robots when I explored last time, mm -hmm. getting that out for free seems really good because then if somebody does produce, it's going to produce here for me. It just felt like a no-brainer, yep. so I'm obviously going to develop. Okay, so we have an explore, a develop, and a produce, so we do it in chronological order, so explore goes first. So again, I draw three, keep two. And I draw two, well, both of us will draw two and keep one. And, uh, yeah. Uh, ooh. Um, I like that I'm getting in, not much of an engine going. The production is nice. The, the thing is, they're all low-value cards, is, is what I'm getting. For me, uh, just a two blue might as well. Uh, not going, and it is a, the thing is, it is a military one, so I, this would get a one-time brown good, whereas this would get a recurring blue good. And brown are one step above blue, I believe, right? Yep. So I think in the long run that's worth more to me, and they're bo both worth the same point, so I will go ahead and keep the gem world. And I have a, uh, I have, I have a decision where I have, um, I drew two military worlds, uh, but one of them I can't play right now. And I can only play if I get two more military strength because I need five. And you know, maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. The question, but I, I would be great to get it because then it has two more built in, and it's an alien world. I can get some some awesome number. I get seven cards for it because I have a plus two on trade. Um, but if someone you've got to build it though. If, if someone right, yeah. calls settle next round, and I don't and I don't build anything because I happen to not have anything in my hand, that's bad. So. The decision is build what you take what you can build uh, for for the next round. Okay. 
And Mark? And for me, these were, are my three. Um, so, I kind of, uh, so Outlaw World gives some nice consume powers and a bit of military, but it is military. Expeditionary Force is just a one develop, so it's relatively cheap to build and would give me the military to build the Outlaw World, potentially, if I went down that route. The Gambling World is one, but I don't really, I've never really liked the gambling. It, it does this thing where you um, get to choose a number, and if you draw the number and, and you get it, then you keep the card. And it's gambling, it. it's right? It's gambling. Yeah, right. I'm actually not a big fan. I think I'm going to toss the Gambling World. All right. Keep these two. So that's our Explore. Boom, done. Now, yeah. this is key. The order of operations, right? So now, going to develop. So my develop is going to be the mining robots, as we've already previously discussed. I get a discount of one because I played the develop, and then I get a discount of one for the investment credit. So I'm pretty sure two minus two, or two minus two is a zero. Mm, done. I'm happy with that. How about y'all? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have zero. I, I have no developments I can I can build, so I don't develop. Okay, and, and I'm Martin has to in decide. an interesting position because I could develop obviously the expedition force, but if I did that, I would have to toss one of these cards. I wouldn't anymore have the cards to build right. the gateway station. <laughs> Martin, I've been Martin's, trying to do for ages. <laughs> Martin's so invested in the uh, in those two uh, the two cards you got earlier. Yeah, right. Like, but on the other hand, other than the gateway station, I have this outlaw world, which I'd then be able to build once I have the expeditionary force, and the outlaw world has itself a nice consume power. Mm -hmm. I yeah. get a victory point and a card. Here, I get a victory point and three cards for two goods. But it's a really... Yeah. Mm. I kind of like the fact that I get a bunch more cards off the gateway station. I think I'll get a nice production consumption thing going and some card draw as well. So I think I'm going to hold with the gateway station. I'm going to resist the desire to build the expedition <laughs> force. And I kind of like that. Nobody else did it. I just got it, and boom, done. All right, so now we go into no. a produce. Right, so simply for me, I just take a card from the top of the deck and turn it into a good. That uh, it's important to note that the that the goods that are that you play under or on top or under your cards, you never look. You're not allowed right. to look at. Yeah, them. so that good. Don't know what it is. For me, that one's going to go there. And normally that would be it for me. However, I have this with mining robots that says produce a good on one brown windfall. Oh, well, would you looky there? So there, and that will go there as well. I get to produce under Earth's Lost Colony because it's a production world, and because I have the Galactic Engineers, I can build under one windfall world, which is my destroyed world. There we go. And boom, that's that. Yep. All right, rinse and repeat. Discard down to 10. I have four. Three. And four. Okay, there we go. So no big hands in that. Uh, do y'all want to talk about what it is you're thinking about? I suspect about, some people are going to, lots of people are going to do the same thing unless, uh, so it's, there's likely going to be a, at least a couple of trades because people have goods and they can get a bunch of cards in hand. Yep. If the two of you, you have four cards in hand. Maybe if you have something that's cheap and, and looks good, maybe you'll build it this round and uh, forego the trade to get a bunch of cards. Um, I think both of you have extra trade power, right? Martin can trade the brown for four, and, and Edward can trade the blue for four also. Yes. So there is a... Uh, There's an incentive to uh, yeah. to trade, right. Yeah. So. so yeah, so I could trade, and as Shrey points out, I'll get four for selling my brown good. However, if I build my gateway station, um, I'm going to be then forced to consume two goods, which I have two goods, and I get a victory point and three. So it's only one card less, and I get the victory point, and I begin to sort of get cycling on the cycle that I want to set up with the gateway station built. So I think I want to build the gateway station, um, and so that puts a settle for me. I don't think what anybody else is doing matters for my decision. And for me, I have a bit of a conundrum here, because I can, I mean, I could, I could go ahead and settle, um, thinking about this, and I, I have a discount of two, on br hmm. I do have a discount of two on Brown Worlds, so that would only cost me one. So building that, which would then increase my military by one, and it's a windfall, which isn't great, but it's worth two points. And then what would I discard? I would probably discard, I think, the export duties, I think is the one I would get rid of. Uh, but then again... The other option is 
I could go ahead and trade because of what we talked about. And I think that's what we would end up doing is keeping it simple. Just, yeah, I would trade. So there we go. Because I like the cards that I have in my hand. I would prefer to not get rid of them. So therefore, drawing more cards is yeah. good. Right. All right. So we have two trades and we have a settle. So we settle first. So Martin, go for it. Okay. So well, you just talked about it basically, yep, right? I'm basically so. settling the gateway station. Uh, that's a windfall, so it comes with a good underneath. I've got to decide which two cards to toss for it. Hmm, interesting. So, of course, I can't build the outlaw world without military, which argues for getting rid of that, but it does have a nice consume power. So if I was to pick up a military from somewhere else, consume power would be handy. Um, although I've actually got three consume powers, which is actually usually kind of enough. And one thing, I, if I may interrupt real mm -hmm. quick, just to make sure, because order of operations, right? You pay for the settlement first. Yes. So in other words, you have to pay the two for right. that. I'm then get you get to draw mm -hmm. one, not draw it first to pay for it, which I think common sense, but I want to yeah. stress that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a, a tricky little, I mean, all these choices in Race of the Galaxy are always very, very tricky. Um, I think I'm going to toss the Outlaw World, and then which of these? The Expedition Force is a cheap development, which is kind of nice, because otherwise I'm not doing much developing. And you get to draw an extra card whenever you explore, right? Well, I'm not planning to do much more exploring. I okay. don't think I'm going to do much more exploring in the game, so I've got my production consumption cycle ready to roll here. So I'm going to be most doing mostly production consuming from now on. Uh, the mining world will kind of help me a little bit with that, because it'll give me an extra production capability, which may or may not be useful. Um, yeah, I think I'll keep the mining world. Okay. So now that you've paid for it, now you get, get to draw, draw and, and... Put a card into my hand. Hmm. And what is, the, what is that uh, new military... New tactic? military tactic. So it's another one of these. Um, here I can discard it. I discard it out of my hand for plus three military. So out, out, a of handy out of your tableau. Uh, oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. So I build it in the tableau and then... Um, Do like what Trey three. had yeah. done, right? what Trey did for yeah. his... It's, it's, what's it's, it? it's plus three temporary military yeah. for, for that round. All right. And then since uh, so since I happen to have something I can I can uh, settle it's and, free and it's free I will just go ahead and <laughs> do mean, that why would and you? it comes with a good. Uh, all right, so for me, um, I wasn't planning on settling right because I I'll be honest like I'm thinking about I'm still not at that level to where I can really focus on what you guys are doing so I'm thinking about okay I want to trade I have good cards in my hand but I do have a discount of two. So why don't I go ahead and only spend one for that? So I will go ahead and settle the Blaster Gem Mines. So it's normally three, but a discount of one, discount of one. So now the question is, which do I get rid of? And I mean, every time I trade, which I'm about to do, I would get an extra card. So I, maybe I don't, maybe I just go ahead and punt on the Artist Colony? Which, I mean, it's a cheap blue. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, not going to overthink it. Just go and punt on the artist colony. That is now paid for. It's a windfall. So that will then get the brown good. And that is the settle action done. So now both Shrey and I did the consume trade. Go for it. Go and do right, yours. So um, I have one consume power and, uh, and I will trade one good first. So it, in this case, it doesn't matter which one I choose to trade because the power of Star Nomad Lair is a good on this world gives you a plus one on trade. So I could, so essentially this is trading for th uh, base of three, base of three, and then this is plus two for trade. So I will so just five. consume this for five, and then this one will get consumed by this power, which is, so it's going to be six total cards and a point. Thank you. So you do the trade first, then consume, right? Yeah. So for my trade, I have brown, blue, brown, Brown is worth more, so that makes sense. And I don't have, yeah, I do, hold on. When I trade, I would get two extra. So this is actually worth four. So I will go ahead there. And so that's one, two, three, four into my hand. And then I must consume. So no four, no four, no four, no four, no four. There's no consumption. So those goods stay. And for me, I have two consume powers. The gateway station, which I've been so eager to build two of any good for one um, victory point chit and three cards. So one victory point, three, oh, whoops. Three I got you. There. Yep. 
Um, one victory point from three cards, not throwing it over the other side. And then this one, consume one of any good for another victory point chit. Uh, all right, here, real quick. Uh, so that is the end of the round. So these come back. So here was my draw. Um, so those three and the deserted alien world, there's nothing else on the deserted alien world you need to see. It has no special abilities. Um, so the pilgrim world, uh, this says uh, discord all remaining goods to gain that number of victory points minus one. So it'd be basically one point for that. Uh, not super great. And this is anytime I consume or I consume one good for two. The galactic trendsetters, I definitely like. The merchant world here is anytime I trade uh, a good, I will get two extra. And this is from any world, correct? It's not from that world, it's any because yep. this is yep, not, any. doesn't produce, it's not a windfall. So, and then just like the others, this says I can uh, discard up to two cards to gain a point apiece. This um, is from hand. From hand. Notice it has a little hand icon down behind it. All right. So <laughs> I get to the, keep all of those. Indeed. No, no, no 2x. No yeah, two it means. can't be doubled yeah, for can. the, the action that is that one. Can't take effect on that. So yeah. that's me. Um, so now I'm figuring out what the hell I want to do. Y'all go ahead. Yeah. Martin, go for it. Okay, so now I'm, I think I'm getting going for a production consume cycle, which is basically the thing I'm going to be produce consume pretty solidly using the production powers that I have and the consumption powers. Um, if I keep cycling now, so I can get some nice victory points, and I'll be picking up um, three cards each time, which is a pretty good cycle. So that pretty much makes my decision straightforward. I need to produce. Yep, and for me. For me, I drew a card that Edward, Edward wants. Um, other way. Oh, by the way. There sorry. You That's all right. Yeah. You, you guys are being troopers. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Okay. I, drew, I drew a card that Edward wants, which is Mining League, uh, because it gets... Oh, yeah. That would have been great. It's two points for every uh, brown, wor brown uh, production world and one point for every brown windfall world, and two points for Mining Robots and Mining Conglomerate. <laughs> Um, so, i.e., the perfect card for me that I don't know you well, have. Well, so it was interesting in that because I have one brown world, right, a brown production world, so I could go in that direction, and I think it's I'm, I'm likely to do that because one of the reasons I, I might do that is because I know Martin is more likely to produce himself, and the Comet Zone, which is a one of the brown, the other brown I have in my hand, has a gets a card whenever produ produces called, so uh, whenever it gets covered. Um, so, I think. Um, going in that direction is probably what I should do, so likely I would just call Settle, which is here. So for me, um, I don't really love my situation. Uh, looking at my hand here, I think the only two cards, notice that they don't produce and they're not Windfall, so I'm thinking that or that, trying to get those settled, I guess? Um, Galactic Trendsetters, because I'm going to be able to, every time, be able to consume for two points. That seems good. That seems good to get out. Uh, so, I honestly, outside of that, it's really all I got. So, I'm thinking settle. I have two, four, six cards. So, I can, I can settle it if I choose to right now. But, I know... Shrey has, what, two, four, six, eight cards in hand. Martin has five, so it's likely that maybe Shrey would settle as well, but he might think that I'm going to settle. So it becomes a, I know that you know that I know that you know. And I don't, export duties is great, but eh. So honestly, I think I would, knowing, well, hold on. I do have goods out here, and I don't have any consumption. So what if I were to trade? Let me think about that. So if I were to trade, that would get me a total of, let's see, that would be, so it's three cards to get rid of one of those. And then whenever somebody produces, myself or otherwise, I would then get to, so maybe I would trade in hindsight to get more. Yeah, I think I would trade. Yeah, there you go. So that's me, trading. All right, settle and produce. Okay, so uh, in order. So three is the first yep, one, so, so settling. So, I'm, so 
I have, well, I have a military world in my hand, but I don't have military strength. Actually, I happen to drew New Galactic Order, which is the uh, the six military, this is the six code development military, which gives me a plus two. Going in that direction might make sense if I happen to draw more than one uh, military world, um, and I did not. So I'm going to uh, settle this Comet Zone. Um, it'll uh, cost me three. I'll pay Merchant Guild uh, and Consumer Markets for sure, and then. Uh, of the remaining, I kind of want to hold on to this just in case I happen to get a, another military strength. And and as much as I would like to be able to, you know, build this long term, I just uh, don't think it's in the cards. So I will ah, see what you did yeah, there. I will pay that, and then the power of settle is I get to draw a card from the deck. And that's my turn. Oh, All right, Mark's fine. So the only thing I can settle is Mining World. Um, none of the other cards feel so appealing that I want to hold anything back, so Mining World is going to go. Um, I have to pay three of those cards. Um, I'll hold on to the new military tactics because it's a cheap develop, and it's more likely for me to go for than any of the others, I reckon. And for me, um, I, I, I will stay on target. So I think we're going to go ahead. That's a consume mm. power. That kind of makes sense. It costs me five. I get no discounts. So one, two, three, four, and five. But the good news is because I chose to trade, I'm going to be able to then, um, and that is six across there. Yeah. Uh, I am going to be able to get some cards. So those will then go. I'm going to clean up the discards a little bit. So here. Just know the discards are there. They're just off camera, so it makes it a little distinction there. All right, uh, so that was the settle. Uh, so then we go uh, consume trade. So trading, for me, it does not matter which one. I don't think. No, no it doesn't. doesn't matter. So it's going to be a brown good regardless. So that's going to be three. So I'll draw three. I have no consumption. Ah, I do now. So three. I do have a consumption, which I must do after I trade. If I can, I can. That goes away. Hey, we're on the board. Well, we're technically, we're on the board already because we have victory points out there, but you get the idea on the actual cards. That's me. Yeah. Done. Galactic Transitors is one of my favorite cards. Yes. Is it? Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. I did not realize. Two yeah. points seems Two points is non-trivial, really right? All right. So are y'all now you all consume if you can. None of you have goods. Can't no, consume. No. That's done. Okay. And now I kick off produce. So if produce for me is pretty glorious. One under the mining world, one under Earth's lost colony. Um, the galactic engineers, I can put one under. And the power of being the produce itself puts another one under here. And because mining world has this extra little benefit, I, I just get a card into my hand as well. So that that's that seems not little, terrible, right? It's not too bad. Um, all right. Yeah, there you go. And then I get I get a I get a world for Comet Zone and a world for New Earth, and I have the same thing that uh, Martin's Mining World is. I get a card whenever I produce on this on Comet Zone, so I will take one to my hand. And oh, that's good. And then um, and then I do not produce on Star Nomad Lab Lair because I have no uh, power that would produce on a win for all world. I did not call produce, and I don't have the card that, like Martin has the Galactic Frontiers. Is that Engineers? Okay. I produce Spice World. And I do have uh, here that I uh, produce on one brown windfall. So Alpha Centauri yep. getting a workout. That's it. And does not. It's a windfall and does not because it's a dead world. Okay. Awesome. So end of the round. Uh, and now, uh, Shrey, why don't you... Or you know what? Here. I don't want people to think that... I'll go first on this one here. Um, so here is my hand of cards of... What I just drew, so let's see here. Uh, draw a card after placing a develop, so that's nice. Um, if I choose, if I were to play that, doesn't trigger itself. Um, but on the consume, it's consuming for a point. This consume is discard one good, meaning on any one world, to draw cards equal to the listed trade price. Trade at price, but do not apply any extra powers that would give me benefit. So it'd be if it's a brown good, I believe that is just a uh, that is just three cards. Not terrible, but I don't think I'm gonna. I think that actually seems pretty good, and that is free, even if somebody else plays a develop because I have a discount of one, and I it is a brown military. I have two military, so I could play this which will give me another military, and it's a brown, 
Another brown. Um, four go mm, points though, right? But it's one, I don't know. It's one of those two or it's an explore and hope that they're going to do one of those. So those are my options. I'm not going to develop. I want to get that card out, but I'm hoping that somebody else would do it. So it's either a settle or an explore just to be able to get more cards in my hand. But honestly, I kind of like the idea of getting that out and hoping, because I wouldn't know that Shrey has, has that one uh, six develop that has the, uh, which one is it? Mining, Mining League. League. Yeah. I wouldn't know that, so maybe I would start going digging for that. So I think what I am going to do is, even though I only have three cards, go ahead and settle. Whether that's the right thing to do or not, again, I'm far from an expert on that. So which of y'all are going? Well, um, I'm feeling I'm kicking into a production consume yeah. cycle. Um, I'd ideally like a third victory point source um, off my consumption powers, but even with two, I think it's, it's worth going. And so I'm kicking into the double victory point consume cycle now. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Flip it over. Sorry, yes. I go. Yep. You don't know what I'm doing. Right, right. Yeah, 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 I know. I mean, we're all playing it on the up yep. and up, so exactly. yeah. yeah. Yep. And I, so I, I would like to get this... Uh, Mining League down at some point. I could build it now, theoretically, because I would spend Which I would cards. love for you to do, but so I don't have to worry about going digging for it, and I wouldn't <laughs> chase my tail. Right, but I don't, I, I don't want to spend all my cards on this right, right now. It's, it's, uh, there, there's other priorities, one of which is I would like to get more, more worlds and more production powers down, and I happen to have a cheap military I can build and another production power. So what I'm going to do is, is build this development, um, so that I can, so that I can consume a, again, and since I know Martin's going to be consuming, or, uh, two Xing, because it's pretty obvious he's two Xing, um, uh, I, this will let me consume both my goods, um, on, that, that I have covered, and, um, and, uh, and then, and then, and then I will eventually, you know, build another world, and then, and then hopefully build my mining, mining league. And now that you, now, now, because again, not terribly experienced, getting that out, if I were to start 2xing, that would be six points as well. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what I should be doing. So, okay. So we then reveal, settle, develop, and consume. All right. So develop first off, Shrey. Right. So I will develop the public works. It'll, it, it's, it's simply for the power of the, uh, uh, the, the, the consumption power. The, the develop power is, is this is just like the, uh, the settle power. Uh, it says uh, after you have, after you develop, after you pay for development, you get to draw a card from the deck to your hand, just like the, uh, the settle power. And that's free for you to do. Yep. Martin, are you doing any? Yeah. Um, the biohazard mining world isn't terribly interesting to me because if I want anything more now, I need another consume power. Um, so I'll build new military tactics, toss this away, yep. and in the hope that, yep, uh, got you. of course, with that plus three, if a, a suitable military world comes up, then I can grab it. All right, and for me, huh, so this is interesting. Now that I get to see everything, uh, do I change gears? So I get a discount. Oh, this is actually free to mm -hmm. settle. That so is, actually, that free. that's free for me. So yes, I will develop this. That actually worked out. That actually played out perfectly for me. Um, so I will go ahead and I'll do it over here. So that's free because of the investment credits, making good use of that. And now that I have that out, now I probably too will get into a produce consume cycle. But then seeing that Martin is doing that, I still have to play it to get the double. So yeah, it's gonna be curious to see how that goes. I did play that so I get to draw another card. Drawing that, oh, we have our first six here. This is a development with an explore power, which is exactly zero. none, so that's zero points. Uh, a world with an explore power, also zero, and any other world is worth an extra point. So the good Four news points. is, one, two, three, four points. So maybe that's worth trying to get out here in a little bit. So not a terrible draw. So that was develop, right? Yep. So that's that. And now we do settle. Well, I'll go ahead and do exactly as I just said. And that's free because brown discount of one, or one military brown and one general military, that's two. So now I have three military and hey, it produces whenever we produce, mm -hmm. done. And uh, I will settle new sur survivalists uh, because it's free and uh, I'll be able to hopefully take advantage of the consumption power over here 
in the long term. This was the draw for my settle, yep. by the way, yeah, so, okay. And I can't settle because I have nothing in my hand. All right, so that's settle, done, and now Martin's double consume. Now the consume, so again, choose my consumption powers. Um, the gateway station gobbles up two cards, um, which go to discards. I get double victory points, so I get two victory points for that. I believe that's yours, right? No, you, no, I have two. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so yep. I get two. Yep. Um, and uh, I get three cards into my hand. So which is nice. It's double victory points, not double everything. So right. double the points, single the cards. Got yep. it. Okay. And then this one consumes a good um, for two victory points. Um, can I? I'm going to swap that for a five. Color it up. Yep. Could we? Could we point out that you should probably keep this under one of the windfalls? Uh, yes, that's true. Actually, yeah. well, the windfalls should uh, take one of the goods because, of course, if somebody else calls produce, then I won't get the both windfalls. And and you want to remove the world from the from the mining world because then if someone calls yes. produce, it will get a, a good on it. Good that on makes it sense. Well. Yep. Uh, and go ahead, go and do your right. So consume. I have two consume powers, and they, so it's basically going to get me a card and a victory point and a victory point. So it's two victory points and a card for these two. Uh, thank you. And for me, let's see, I have this one, which is a card for two points. So there for two. And coming through. I can do them in any order, but it's, it's mood. So there, and that's one more. So that's five traded in for a nickel. That's the end of the round. All right. So now... Um, Hmm. I'll go first. None of us really have any kind of goods out here. And both Martin and I want to produce, because I produce on this, I produce on this, and I produce on the brown windfall, one of them. So I would get three goods uh, by producing. I would get four goods if I produce, because I have that on a brown, and the produce goes on a windfall as well, which... So normally I would think that I would want to wait for Martin to go ahead and do the produce for me, but the extra fourth good seems good. So without the only other thing that I would think about doing is exploring to be able to get more cards because I only have two cards in my hand. But I don't know that I really need to do that. I think at this point it's just about the produce consume, so I'm going to produce. There you go. All right, um, so... I, so I'm looking to get more production, or sorry, consume powers, and so I really want this mining lead to get, to get built, because it'll, get, it'll let me con consume my two rare brown goods for three points. Um, so to do that, I only have four cards in hand, unfortunately, so I, can't pr I cannot develop it. Um, I don't need to develop this round, because nobody's going to be calling, well, I guess Martin might call trade, but um, he's not going to 2x in this round, likely. I right. He yeah. could, but I, d I don't think he would. Um, so uh, instead, what I what I'm what I would do is try to get more cards in my hand. So for next round, I can develop this, and I assume that one of the two of them will produce, which will get me uh, the goods on the on the worlds that I want. Um, so so for that purpose, I will be exploring, which is a little Makes unusual, sense. but yeah. So here am I in an inter again an interesting pos quandary position. I can see Edward is well set up for a production consume cycle and he's actually slightly better set up than I, I am because he's got three um, victory point um, consumptions which will mean he gets six each round and I only get four each round so I'm a bit behind the ball there although I do get the cards as well which is also of course quite handy. Hey, so there's a good chance that Edward would choose produce um, of course, he knows I also want to boost the goods, so he <laughs> might do something else. Could I do something else? Well, I could perhaps pull this one off either with a trade or with a double victory point. It would be a couple of victory points. Um, I wouldn't be able to use this consume power. I'd have to use this one. So it would be a two victory point one. Could be kind of interesting. So let's sneak a couple of quick victory points. If somebody used, else chose produce, that could work quite nicely. So I'd still produce on three worlds. And I actually only need to produce on three worlds because I've only got enough consumption for three. So going slightly off center like that would be an interesting possibility. Another possibility might be, is it worth trying to um, build any of these? Well, the only one I could build would be Settling the Secluded World. And unfortunately, it's got a, it got a um, 
consumed power, but its consumed power is for cards, not for victory points. If it were for victory points, I think I might go for it, because I want that extra victory point consumption. Yep. Um, but since it isn't, I think I'll abandon that plan. So the question is, if I didn't know, if I hadn't been listening to what Edward was doing, would I have the um, determination to say, I'm going to take the, uh, the double consume as opposed to the produce? I don't know what I would pick. <laughs> That's fair. And so I'm going to do that one. So question for you. You said for the consumption, you would have to do this one and can't do that? Uh, yeah, because this requires two cards. Oh, I missed that. I You're right. There it is. So I can only do that one, but it would give me two victory points. All right. So yes. Hey, I'm producing. Exploring. And I'm consuming. Okay, that seems off. fair. There you go. All right, so explore. Go for it. Uh, two, three, uh, three cards. And the reason you guys keep going the three versus the seven is because you get to keep the yeah. extra card and you're not looking for something specific, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, definitely. All right. Yeah, that's why I did it earlier on because I needed two cards specific. So, to Martin, go and draw your two. So get to draw two and keep one. And yeah. same. And these are really general spenders. Um, I happen to do a, a cheap military brown world, so I will definitely hold on to that. And the other ones, I will just uh, the other I'll just toss one of the other ones. So, and for me, um, that's free to build. They're worth the same amount of points. The thing is, the green, uh, I get the hierarchy right. The the only thing is the green windfall. Mm, you're not gonna be trading. No. There's no reason for you to be trading. Uh, it'd be, yeah, because it's, oh, it's double victory points at this point. So if that's the case, I would keep that one and I would toss the sentient race. Done. Okay. And I okay. toss the military because I toss military. Okay. Boom. Done. So that is explore. 2x. And then 2x. Okay. So I, can, I am forced to consume this for two victory points. Okay. And then producing. Everybody produces, but I produce a lot, which is nice. I produce one there. I produce one there. I produce on a windfall because of I played produce, so there. And I produce on a windfall, a brown windfall because of that, so there. That doesn't suck. This is the best engine I've ever had in any play in history of Race for the right, Galaxy. So, and I produce uh, on the novel world there, the uh, rare world here, and the rare world here. And then because I produced on Comet Zone, I get a card to hand. Nice. And I get to produce on the Earth's Lost Colony because it's a production world. I get to produce on the mining world because it's a production world. And then destroyed world using my galactic engineers gives me the production. And I don't get any more because I didn't choose produce. So you, get a card. you get a card for the mining and world. And I get a card off the mining world. All right. So that is production. Done. Uh, I, I, I think Martin and I, it's a pretty obvious cycle at this yeah. point. Right, mm -hmm. two xing, yeah. and then for me because I have this I, I, now I'm at the you point have a ton of hand I, cards, right? I, now, yeah. now I'm at the point that I want to build this mining league yep. to start uh, consuming for for you know more more points. So I will be developing. Okay, there you go. Okay, so go ahead. So develop. So hey. mining league. Oh, there it is. You have it all, bummer. Okay. So I got to decide which cards to get rid of. Um, one, two. Um, I'm going to hold on to this one, three, um, get rid of two more. I think it's going to be four, five, even though if I built this one, I would be then be able to build this one. Um, that's just too many steps and the game's going to end too quickly. So I hold on to these two because I can build both of them and they're actually, you know what? I will hold on to this because it's good to have another development in your hand. Um, in case, as a, right, yeah, as in a case, GP, in case, right? In case yeah. it gets developed. Okay. So that's five cards. All right, and discount of one because yeah. of that. Martin, are you developing anything? Hmm. Well, possible to be the replicant robots. One, two, three, four. Um, that would make it cheap to do some future. This is a really attractive world to try and settle. Because five points, right? Five points and, and the, the consumption, extra consumption right? power that I want. I'm not sure I want to discard it because I will get some cards in, of course, when I uh, do the consume, giving me the option of settling this next round. Um, so I think I'm going to not go for the replicant robots. The genetics lab is just too boring. I'm going to hold. Okay. And for myself, I don't have enough cards. No. Okay. Done. So we're done developing. And then Martin and I, 2x, right? So pretty simple. Two, 
and so three, yeah. so six points all day. Now I just have to decide which cards. And so production-wise, it'll be that one and that one, I guess. Mm -hmm. I forego the windfall bonuses, but eh, it's all right. At least this way, that happens, right? If somebody gets a produce, so that's me done. Uh, consume. Oh, yep. So uh, since now I have my mining league, I can consume two brown goods for three points. So I will consume this and this for three points. Give me two back. Uh, well, I'm going to hold on to one, and okay. then I will, yeah. and then I'm going to consume this one for uh, a card and a point. So I get that and that. Thank you. Okay, and then Martin does his. My but usual three goods consumed with these two consume powers, for which I get four. I'll give you give you one for a five. Uh, oh, oh, there's no fives left. left. Um, so and four. Um, so four and um, three cards. Mm. And to be clear, we are. Five points away from triggering the end of the game. So Dang. very close to the end of the game now. Wow. All right, so that is, go ahead and pull those back. Nobody produced. So now we get to the point of the game where, I'll let, I'll, I'll, uh, should I, should we talk about sure. what ahead. you are going to do? Uh, because I think, yeah. so yeah. It, it likely you would, you would Evaluate this for the board state and and decide whether you want to end the game or not. Yeah, I think so. And without without mathing everything out, I have two cards. I have two uh, consume actions. That's six points. There's five here. We would then pull in the extras that are not in the game, and that would trigger the end of the game. Yeah. Um, because realistically, I'm not going to get this out, and I I feel like it's not going to necessarily get better. The more I draw this out, so therefore, yeah, I would probably go ahead and do the exact same thing. Yeah, and then and trigger it. I, I, so evaluating the fact there's only five points left, and Edward can get uh, can consume all of them, um, and knowing this is going to be the last round, likely the last round, uh, I I have I'm just going to look for something that I can build, and uh, I have a couple things I can build. I can build any of these cards technically, uh, but this one. Gets me an extra point because of my mining mining league, and it'll come with a good on it, which will get consumed for a for a point. So okay, so good. I will obviously settle. And to be clear, even though I'm consuming all these points, or I have the ability to, doesn't mean that Shrey doesn't get any points. Right. Again, once those are consumed, we just bring these out, and people continue to make points yeah. that round. Yeah. So just to be clear. And for me, again, similar calculation. Edwards can finish this game. There's no point in me using produce because I'll never get the chance to. Uh, to actually so do to anything use with anything. the goods, right. So this terraformed world now becomes purely interesting because of the fact that it's five points. So That's a non-trivial amount. So there we go. Okay. So settle and settle. So everybody's settling. And here, we, we just went through it. So yeah. here, yeah. there you go. Mine's free. Mine well, gets done. a good. And at this point, it wouldn't matter because you get no leftovers unless you have something on one of your sixes that says you get X amount of points or you get points for something. Nothing else matters other than what's printed on the cards in those. And yep. that's it, right? So then, here we go, consume. So, boom, boom, six points. That triggers it. That's f So, I will take a 10. No, I won't. I will take a five and one. That triggers the end of the game. You both consume. Yep, I have a card that will turn into a point and a card. I'll, uh, so I will take the card uh, because it is technically cards in hand on and goods are as a tiebreaker for the Okay, end of the game. fair enough, fair enough. Um, okay, so and yep. nothing left to consume. So yep. now we count them up. So what here? I'll, I'll we'll, uh, let me see here. Let me see how close that is, and I'll go ahead and go over mine real quick. So it's the hexes on it. So zero. One, two, three, five, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Ten plus what I have here. So ten, twenty, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Leader in the clubhouse there. Shrey, go for it. So I have uh, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nineteen, and then this one is. Two points for every brown world. One point for every brown. Uh, two points for every brown wi production world. One point for every brown uh, windfall world. And then mining robots and mining conglomerate, which I have neither of. So I get an extra two, four, five points. 
So uh, 24. 24 all day? Yep. So here, give up the five. There you go. And Martin? I've got 13 in victory point chips. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 24. Uh, so 24, 24, 27. 27. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there we are. That's it. Who knew? <laughs> All right. Terrible teacher. Uh, apparently so. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever won a game of race. Uh, all right. So there you go. And, and, and that, that's race for the galaxy. So now what we're going to do is grab your starter card out and any Indeed. other, and any yes. other positive starter cards yeah. that you have. Yeah. We'll get the others out of the deck and the discards. Yeah, yeah, that goes there. Uh, there should be 36. Yeah, I forgot to, I forgot to draw a card for, uh, for my investment uh, credits or whatever that card is called. Thank you. I should remember to do that. So 18, 28. Nope, not in here. Wait. Four. 26, 26, 31, four. 36, right there. Okay. Two. All right, so here are the 36 points to start the game. Make sure I counted right. What is that? That's 25, that's an, oh. eight. 30, 36. Okay. And we got the, yep, and y'all shuffle. And now we're going to actually play without going through all of that. All right. Do you want to deal out the uh, Star World? Yeah, I can do that while y'all are doing the, that. Yep. Add them to the deck. The uh, yo, good call. So, yep, okay. There, I'll let y'all choose your own. Hey. Epsilon Iridani. Uh, it's a two dead world, but plus one military and consumption. Point in a card. Where are the extra star rolls? Uh, oh, right here. Sorry. I'll take and one. Alpha Centauri. We already know what that one is. All right, cool. So now we're going to just play and not talk through it necessarily, and so folks can see. Okay. With y'all, at yes. least. How so that was probably the go. slowest game of Race of the Galaxy in world history. It, but I, again, <laughs> but it's with cause. We needed to. Right. Uh, I think it was the right thing to do, but mm -hmm. now it's good to show a bit more what it's actually like to feel like in terms right. of Right, here we go. Together. Right. So, what time is it? 8.58. So, four, four. Two more. Five, six, and. And then one to Alpha Centauri. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So what do I have? I have one. Oh, oh, hey. Um, yeah. Okay. So here, uh, y'all, just focus on your own hands. So here. So. Hmm. I mean, good luck with that. I feel like <sighs> we saw that one. Uh, it seems like a pipe dream. Ooh. I think we hold on to that. So there's one, there's two, there's three. So the question is, which of these is do we go with? And the fact that we don't have any of the top card in my right hand here leads me to think we get rid of that or that one. Because nothing I have is going to boost that, so I think we're going to get rid of that. Yeah. Discards. Um, hold on. So we're getting rid of that one, two, three. I have to get rid of two of those, and the other one will be that one that we get rid of. There we go. Boom. All right. Um, God, y'all are Jesus. It the same. It goes fast. It. I am. <laughs> wow. Uh, And now, now is where I'm going to struggle because going quick against these guys, I'm not going to have as well thought out. Okay. Two explorers and a trade. That's so, okay. 
Okay, so exploring, so you're getting three. Three, yep, yeah, you're getting three. I'm getting three. Martin's getting two, and then Martin's going to trade. There you go. And here, I'll let you all see it this I way. Uh, that actually, get, that. oh. Oh, interesting. So that is actually less hurts your military. Um, so I get to keep two of these, right? Yep. Yeah, but it's the only cheap world that I have. God. One, two, three. That would be six. That's seven. Oh, I threw it away, didn't I? Son of a biscuit, I did. Um, so if that's the case, then we're going to get rid of that. There. Done. Yeah, my, my opening hand was pretty garbage, or uh, it's not garbage, it's fine, but it doesn't, didn't give me enough of a, uh, a direction, so that's why I explored, and uh, and happened to do something I kind of liked. I need my, to... my opening move was obvious since... Uh, yeah, I yeah. Good... trading was, settle, settle, settle. Okay, so, we're, hey, well, so just settle and then draw a card. Settle, yep. windfall, card. Settle, spaceport. And that'll be uh, Empath World, so that ki that offsets the military, three, and four. it's... There, and I have to discard one um, since that pretty much killed my military. That's going away. There, and then draw a card. That's what we drew. Yeah. I have no idea what I should be doing at this point. Um, and we could have five cards. Five, yeah. Okay, you know what? I think we go with that, so. Twit. Yeah. I don't feel great about it, but all right. Yeah, right, right. And now Edward shuts off the stream and retires from race. Yeah, that's it. I'm out. All right. Settle. Trade. Yay. Yes. That All is, right. So is I'm settling. Want. So there, the merchant world for four. One, two, three, four. I don't have any discount. So I'm out of cards, but I figure I'll be able to, assuming somebody would trade. So therefore, I would get to, oh, I have to trade. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Never mind. I forgot that. Oh, well. But thinking I would be able to get, yeah, well. Hey, are y'all settling? Yep, I settled the Galactic Engineers, which is oh, the yeah, card Martin had last time. And then now we, are you, uh, so you're I'm deciding. Just, I'm just uh, deciding at this point. Yeah, I think I'm going to build the Galactic Resort. Yeah, when it comes to the. Oh, and now I, now I did the exact same thing that Martin did last One, two, game. Two, three, four. Five. So, yep. I, so now I trade. Th uh, this al That's alien gets me five plus one, so I get six. That's what I should have done. I should have traded for this. Yes. Yeah. Well, I must use my consume power on the galactic resort, which I'm not too unhappy with. I get a victory point on the card. Exact same. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a nice card. And that's what we drew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so eight, nine. It's my only nine. card. I need to count. Oh, produce, of course. Oh, right, yeah, produce. Oh, Duh. Delightful. Oh, you, uh, no, I don't. Oh, God. And I, ugh. I need to count. That's terrible. One, two, three. So, pretty obvious what I'm doing, I think. Yeah, same for me. Four. Yep, Guzzarino, I absolutely should have, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, all right, done. Explore. Develop. Trade. Ooh, explore. All right, so one, two, three, one, two, unless you all have yep. something else. Two, yep. and pick one. I get to keep oh. two of these. Um, I want both of them. Okay. Wow. Now, actually. Remember, you can't play two cards with the same name, so the one I have. So clearly, we're getting rid of that then. Fine, fine, fine. Where did it go? So that's explore, done. What did I, oh, and now sorry. we are developing. That's the one I'm discarding. 
develop. How do developing export duties? One, two, three, four. Does it make sense to do that? Five. I'm building new galactic order. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to develop that because that's a consumption for discarding cards. I'm just not going to be in a position to have more cards, so I'm not going to. And trade? Trade. I trade this. Brown is usually um, three, yep. but four, five, thanks to my spaceport. Six, thanks to my extort duties. Six. And then consume. Um, uh, yes, that's true. I and mean, I also consume this one for another card and the Richard Bolt. I'm not sure you have That's a good question. I might even have 10. Who knows? Wow. Uh, no, uh, only nine. A mere nine cards in my hand. So, a new round. Take it back. Yep. I don't know if I did. To do with this. Did I draw a card for settling that? No. Let me see. I had, I had, yeah, I did because I had to use my entire hand. I had one card and then I just explored. So, yeah. oh no, the consumption was there. No, I did not. I don't believe I did. So there's that. All right. So with that said, does that do it? Oh God, come on. The, I'm in a really bad cycle right now. Explore. Develop. Settle. Ah, brilliant. One, two, three. One, two. One, two. Oh, explore. That's handy. Mm. I needed one more card. I cannot get a world that produces. <laughs> and I keep getting, uh, I keep getting um, uh, consumptions that are discard cards from hand. I'm like, really? Mm. Which one to keep? I mean, I can't get brown worlds. Do I, hang on, do I discard my other one? I'm confused now. I can't remember what cards I had in my hand. Yeah. What did you do? I de I, sorry, I developed. I already got rid of the card. What am I doing? Well, it, at this one point. Shot. So develop. Yep. Yep, develop. Now I guess I will. Hmm. So uh so one four keeping that. Alright, and then settle yep. if you want to. Distant world for four. I settled, uh, I developed Space Marines and settled Lost Alien Battle Fleet. Right. Mm. Oh, God. Somebody's very military over there. Yep. Mind you, I've got the beginnings of a pretty awesome production consumer engineer. Oh, yeah, you, you got your third economy. color, yeah. Diversified economy. Yeah, you need to, yeah, you're going to be producing. You know what I'm going to be cards. doing for the rest of the game. Yeah. All right. So you kill produce. And I Explore. trade. Because I can't seem to get any worlds. One, two, three. You're welcome. You're welcome. Eh. Ah, oh, Jesus. I mean, yes, but I can't. It's terrible. It's a. It's, I'm in such a spiral right now. I can't get a world that produces. So I guess we're going to keep, we will. I'm out of it already. I feel like I'm too far behind. You, you kind of need to, you're in a weird position. If you have nothing in your hand that's worthwhile or yeah. that you think is, a, then, um, then right. I, I, rather than exploring this round, I probably would have produced, even though it, like, it, I don't produce anything. Well, you would you would cover your green. Oh, I guess I would and because then, and then of trade, the trade, and then trade because you have an extra plus one trade. You would get five cards, um, right? Plus at, two. Oh, it's plus six. So cards. there you go. That's okay. So keep, okay. At this point, uh, since 
Yeah, so you should hold on to stuff that you can settle for cheap because you, because you get a discount. Right. So. Yep. All, all right. right. Now we trade. So I get six cards. And that's it. No one else does. Four, oh, six. Well, we all produce. Well, not all of us. So wah, wah. Distant world, one on the spaceport, and the other one will definitely be on the Centauri because I'm setting myself up for my diversity. And, uh, and did you get your cards for um, your, your diversified economy? Not three, yet. Three, oh, three, yes, that's three true. Cards. I get one card for each kind of good I produce this phase as well. Three cards. Yeah, I forgot that. Yes, diversified economy is such a beautiful card. It gives you cards all over the place. Four, decisions are easy. Five. Decisions are very straightforward. Where is that card? Develop. Ooh, delightful. And settle. All right. So mm -hmm. I will develop uh, Galactic Survey SETI for five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Unfortunately, I cannot. I want to be able to do that because they give me a discount. Oh, actually, wait a minute. That would then be free. I will develop. So I will, oh, it would cost me both, but then I couldn't play it. <laughs> nope, I'll develop. <laughs> Are you developing? No, Martin? I'm not developing. All right, so then settle. I get uh, that discount of two, so I pay one. That will be the cheaper there and I get to draw one when I do so and that comes with world or with a good yep I'm settling spice world for two and then consuming so you're getting six points and then I consume using my diversified economy three different colors for six points got gotcha. you and then you consume your brown for a point in a card <sighs> yep Oof. As good as last game was. Oh, that's there's our drawing. So maybe this is the direction we go. Sort of. Okay. Um, Once more. I think that's what we do. Produce. And produce. Trade. Oh, I should I should have seen that Martin was going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will consume this for six cards. And one, two, three, four, and five, Martin six. and I don't have any, so we produce. I only produce on. Uh, which one do I want? Better be on the green. Mm, yeah. So I will produce there. Which then. Blah. And we'll know what I'm doing next. And that will be the last round. Really? Will it? No, there's I mean, these. There's oh, there's all those. Okay, yeah, sorry, there's I was 20 just looking at what's in the... Yep. Okay, we've got all right. To go. Settle, all right. 2x, and trade. Yep. So settle. Settle. Nope. Nope. Okay, so trade, uh, that is four... Oh, card for settle. Five, six for trading. Finally. Finally. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's those left. When done, shuffle the discards in. So finally, though, we have something in theory. All right, that's uh, Martin is and consume. I have no consume powers. Okay. Oh, I forgot my uh, cards when I uh, produced. I should have got three cards. You should take produced. three cards. That might have made a difference on that. Anyway, um, so for my consumption, um, I do the three for the... Eight points um, and a card. So this one economy plus that, so that's eight points and a card, as you say. So I'll take eight. Two, you know what? Ten. I think that might have just. I got my card. Good lord. I don't think I have the time to do those, but that would be an ideal if I'd gotten it going earlier. 17. Two more bales. Two more consumers. That's enough. Yeah, okay.
think we go there first. So, okay. Amazing. Settle, produce, settle, settle. settle. There, cost three, two discounts, so it only cost one. At this point, we'll get rid of that. Is an, and you get a card, right? Uh, yeah. And I yeah. draw one. Yeah, and I'll just yep. give it one more shuffle, and then you can cut and draw. And then produce. Yeah. Oh, I get to produce on a couple. Oh, I, I elect not to. This is this yeah, is. I should have had a card way earlier, but that's fine. Comical. And this will be the last round. Will, will it? Will it? No. No, the seventeen. And the seventeen, 17. points. Oh no, maybe yeah. not. Doesn't so I need two. <laughs> I keep thinking it's going to be close to it. There we go. Settling. Settle. Consume double victory points. That's free for me to uh, settle. Alien, because minus two for an alien world, minus two, that's free. And draw a card. And oh, you're going to settle. Let me think in my hand. Oh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then two X. Two X, and that's like an eight. And a card. Eight and a card. Same as the old. Do very much with, I suspect. And develop, produce, settle. All right, so develop. That's for six. Two. Minus one is oh, five. Yeah. yeah, this is ending uh, the end one, of the game this round. Yeah, well, Two, three, anything. four, five. Uh, and this is a five. There we go. Stick. Here. I'm just happy I got that. So that one draw at least got me some points. So I'm happy with that. Underneath, just in case. Oh, and this should have come with a uh, when I settled. All right, and that triggers the end of the game. Yep. Because twelve, right? Yep. There we go. All right. So now uh, we go into final scoring. So here we go. Three, five, seven, nine, ten, eleven. 14, uh, 2 for the win for Alien Windfall, 14, 16, and 2 more for Alien Cards, 16, 18, 20, 22. So 24. All day. That's me. Uh, so I have um, 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, plus every military is a point. So 23, 25, 27, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, plus um, worlds with an explorer power are two and other worlds are one. So 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Oof. Didn't oh. get lapped. <laughs> No. Well, I start on 24 from my victory points. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, which would be, oh, 35, yep. Yeah. would be a nice score, but not compared to 47. 47, 35, and a rightly 24. That's about where it should have ended, I think, uh, previously, so there you go. But that goes to show how quick. Now, were we rushing it a little bit? Yeah, but it can play that quick, right? Mm. And obviously... Uh, when you get to that level, you could score that massive and still play that quick, right? You just, how? How are you, how is it, what is it you're seeing when you're playing it? Well, uh, so I had this card in my op opening hand. I was in my, it, it was, was very early. It was very actually. early. And, um, and so, uh, and, oh, actually, I drew this card really early. And this led into being able to uh, be draw a ton being of able cards, to draw, right? draw a ton of cards, which yeah. facilitated uh, building the the, uh, the big six. And this card let me, since Martin was producing, 
uh, this card produced on the Alien World, which, which let, me, let me trade it a couple more times. I, I think I traded three times with this, which got mm -hmm. me the the card seeing power to see all the other settlements I could settle. That makes and, sense. And and this just fell into my lap. This was what like uh, 10, uh, 10 points or twelve points, yeah. something like that. Which is this is a great. This is a I love this card. This is such a galactic set, service set. It's 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 mm -hmm. I the power on it is irrelevant. It's just the points. Um, it's a, it gives you two draw, but it, it's for every world that has an explorer on it, it's two points, and every other world is one point. Every development with an explorer power as well is one point, and that's usually in a full tableau. That's going to be at least ten points, um, maybe. Uh, okay. So it's it's just it just that one just fell into my lap. So well played. All right. Well, mm. there you go. That was that yeah. was a blast. Thanks for this. Um, I mean, Race for the Galaxy is a classic. I think at this point, I don't think this is new or news to anybody out there, but hopefully hopefully this shows that it's not as impenetrable or as scary as I originally thought it was back when I first played it in 2013. So hopefully that helps you all. It also gives you a sense for the, you know, all the decisions involved in the game, because there's just a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Um, for a deck of cards yeah, It's and amazing how much thought goes chance. into it. But, you know, uh, I do have one complaint. I mean, there are, there are um, novelty goods, there are um, rare earths, there are genes, there are alien goods, but none of the goods are thumbs. And you need to hit the thumbs down to subscribe to the channel because we want you to produce thumbs because we consume thumbs for triple victory points. Yeah. I didn't know where he was going and then it clued in. I yeah, was like, no. ah, there it is. All right. So there you go. Thanks to y'all for doing this. Uh, I certainly appreciate y'all taking the time to do this. Thanks to everybody for watching. Thanks to everybody over at Rio Grande for sponsoring the playthrough. Certainly appreciate it. We'll be back next week. Uh, we recently got Plays of Imperial Struggle. In uh, Twilight Struggle is going to be coming. 18 Chess Peaks coming. Um, and more. So, looking forward to that. So, thanks. Subscribe. Just like what Martin said, consider supporting the show over on patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. And with that, we will see you all later on, maybe this weekend, if not early next week. I'm Edward. I'm Shrey. I'm Martin. Didn't embarrass myself. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a good night. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Woo! So, that, that was impressive. To Very watch awesome. y'all churn through that, like, to just... Wow, that was impressive. And that's uh, like, it was like 19 minutes. Yeah, so, it's yeah. Really typical. Although yeah. I've, been, I've played with people who go faster than that, but I yeah. just roll through. I know I'm not a good player because I've played good players. No, roll through the galaxy is a different game. It's, you 